just been washing off the old combine which we bought. I think it could have been 1988. I should check because I have the registration document. It's a class Senator 60. Massive Ferguson 165 Perkins engine. And we are the second owner from BDN 17R. It was uh, 1976 this was made, or at least first registered 76. August 76. And, oh, obviously it's a bit rusty. It's, it's really quite impressive. So, relatively, uh, yeah, good condition it is still. I've just, uh, no, I haven't used it for three years. It's a bit lucky in there. Because it's been in. It's been in this shed here, which is basically a carving shed down the, packed down the side. And when you get it out and use it every year, the dust doesn't build up just as much. But I haven't used it for three years. If not, I think it's four years since it was last used. It's been stood in there all that time. Anyway, the, the remarkable thing is that the, the fuel tank was brim full, and. Uh, a little bit worried that the fuel itself might be an issue and it would pull up the filter but it seems to be running normally it started just as if it had been used uh, the year before they're no different really that tire's a bit slack could do a little bit of air in it and I've see I don't know routinely wash it I have washed it before but you have to be careful because when you wash it, you spray oily water here, there and everywhere and it makes the belt slip. You sometimes can't move it till next day. So I, it's coming for to, someone's coming to pick it up later this week and uh, drive it to his place. I would rather you than me, but uh, nonetheless, I don't think it'll fail the way it's just getting through. It, it, uh, the head of his, I suppose it's a 10 foot cut, the bits stick out each side, so it's, it's, it's not illegal on the road, but it's a little bit... Uh, borderline. It's a shame the back got a bit battered. I think I counted that actually. The only thing I know is the inside you can see down there there's, there's a bit more crap in there than normally. I think it's just from being some rat's nesting or something because uh, anyway it, it's all loose. It's to shoot out when it started again. I've been, I think I think I've been rummaging about that dislodging stuff and this is all so familiar to me like I used to climb up and down here and work these levers I'm sure plenty of people have seen a similar combine we lost the key it worked on a nail <laughs> you know, one of those the white gauge it's a forward speed I think that one it doesn't work everything else works except that it doesn't charge this just looks like total automation. You go. That tells you how high your uh, header is. Start stop. The control is actually quite simple. It's not difficult to drive. <coughs> ah, just in there. The engine. I'll just extend. I'm not going to put that. I might have some oily water in there. I didn't want to throw that off and get it down the belts. But it doesn't. It doesn't leak water. It doesn't leak oil. In fact, the, it had an oil change and it's, it's done th two or three seasons since it's had a full service with oil and filter and everything. Uh, but to say that was uh, that would be at least five or six years ago. So it really probably due for another one. But he didn't, because we only did it like uh, 10 or 15 acres. So we had uh, no real need to give it a full service every year. You just go around and check your levels and that and you off you go. Until I think about changing filters and things every three to five years. 
obviously some people wouldn't be happy with that but when you've only got like 10 or 15 acres you, you don't need to be doing it every year so yeah it, it's so sad to see it go but I haven't grown barley here since I think it was 2016 but it might have been 2015 four years ago I can't remember I should I should know really I do know anyway but I had a, one last field along here which was reseeded that that's the one that gives a clue I think it's through that was three years ago we bought this from Seward's I think there were still at Pickering then, that's where we got it from. Because the fellow that, when we bought it, someone just drove it here. So, certainly driving it on the road isn't illegal, too difficult. And so it's never really let us down. I seem to remember that when we first got it, it might have been the first year or the second year, a bearing did go on one side. But since then, it's had no issues whatsoever we had except for the odd belts it was um some, i think they're in under here straw walker belts one of those went and i literally had about 10 yards left to do it went the whole time there was just this tiny little bit left to do and the straw walkers belts gave up and then these two here they're probably the newest ones because i replaced them they drive just drive, that's, that's all that drives ahead of those two thin belts. That was the last thing that it needed. The last year I used it, it didn't need anything. I had them the year before, and then the year before that, you had to have them out to do that one. Or was the two? But anyway, they're quite important ones. I don't know what, I can't remember now exactly what it didn't do, but they. Somebody obviously had to have a mechanic to, to do that one. And apart from that, I, I guess we have had a... Oh, the, there's like a main drive belts because we have two uh, quite steep fields and if your main drive belts weren't like spot on, they're on the other side, you had, had problems that it would sort of go like a slipping clutch type feeling. You couldn't get up the hill. That's this. This one, see that's not bad because that was replaced quite early on. But to be honest, I replaced it, and it still it still did the slipping thing a little bit from time to time. Because see, our we have a hill that's really really steep. And there's no battery on at the moment. It's a bit oily in there. <coughs> but I think it'll give him um, just basic looking after. I think he'll get ten years out of that. If he wanted to, we shall see. Anyway, and everyone will be wondering what, what did it cost? Well, um, I'd originally sort of put it about, I would sell it for £1,500, but that was like three years ago, two or three years ago, and I hadn't really any serious interest in it. People, a couple of people had asked me about it, and the, the fellow who was getting it, he deals in straw. I won't say his name, but people will know locally and I got the uh, a load of straw this time and uh, he's uh, doing a deal on that so basically I'm getting a, a lot of straw bales for free which it doesn't seem much in a way like one year's straw for the price of the combine but it's doing no good doing that thing is he was in this shed here with a, with a bit of bard missing and I need to there's a barrier in there with some uh, cattle area to the left and, a, and just a sort of alleyway where you sort of park this and scrape protector behind it and I needed it out because the barrier needs replacing so I thought well if once I get it out of there I'm not going to put it back in and uh, is it going to be packed in the corner of the field and then maybe be scrapped in a year or two? It's just be almost criminal to do that to a good working combine, even though it's a small one by modern standards. Well, this this could do 20 acres in a good day if you had plenty of people running about with trailers. Here, typically, we used to have either one field or two fields, and if it was one field, I could do it in a day, and I was emptying trailers myself or get two filled up around dinner time. The tears will be emptying while I have my dinner. 
filled two up and then come back and have a coffee, fill another two up and and it was tea time and then there wouldn't be much left. You would fill the field trailers lasting at night and tip them next morning. Or you might do the headlands be before you did the main field. So it was very rare, it did more than three days work and often it was one or two.